All right, there we have it. It's confirmed. The AFL Grand Final for 2020 is going to be held at the Gabba on October 24th under lights. Now, if you have been living under a rock, I can recap for you. Obviously, the MCG is unplayable at the moment. There's no football being played in Victoria. All 10 sides out of Victoria have been relocated to Queensland. And thus, for the very first time in history, we're having a grand final away from the state of Victoria. Now, obviously, the MCG grand final is a long-standing tradition. It's one that I support. I actually really enjoy the grand final being at the MCG. So the first game or first grand final away from that state is really significant. I think the furthest they've traveled from the G is Waverley in 1991. And maybe there's a couple of other grand finals that were other at other grounds as well, but never as far as another state before. So as you might know, the AFL actually has a contract with the MCG to host every grand final there up until the year 2057. And it's taken a worldwide pandemic for us to actually have to go away from that contract and have an exemption and have the game somewhere else. So we knew this decision was looming for a while. Obviously the AFL and Guild didn't want to admit that the grand final wasn't going to be at the G up until the last moment because of these contractual obligations. But we knew it was going to be most likely Queensland. It was reported that WA was also a contender. And then after that, South Australia and New South Wales had their own bids as well. Now, I guess from a logistics perspective, the Queensland grand final makes sense. You've got 10 teams already hubbing there. The Queensland government has made the concession of having up to, I think, is it 38,000 people attend their game, whereas I believe WA weren't able to make the same promise despite having 60,000 seat stadium, they weren't able to guarantee over 30,000 in attendance. Now there is an argument out there that because Queensland's helped facilitate this season by having most of the teams hub there and they've sort of taken their own kind of risk and having the players, you know, isolate in Queensland playing games with limited uh, capacity that they, as a result of helping the AFL, deserve the grand final. For me, while this is probably true, this should probably be the lowest point of consideration when deciding where the grand final is meant to be. For me, I won't lie, I was hoping Optus Stadium as a Perthite would be picked. Obviously, I'm a big West Coast Eagles fan, and of course, that's going to make it easier for the Eagles to win the grand final. So I'm not going to hide the fact that I would have been pleased on that respect. But also, it's not a great argument, but I'm also just big into the aesthetic of the grand final. I firmly believe the grand final should be at the best stadium where it can possibly be held. And for me, that's Optus Stadium, followed closely by Adelaide Oval. It might sound like an empty argument coming from an Eagles fan, but to be honest, if we could have had the grand final at the MCG, that would have been my preference too. The other arguments for it are the fact that, you know, WA would obviously potentially have a 60,000 seat attendance. I think the only reason McGowan didn't want to give that guarantee is, of course, if we have another outbreak or a few cases, 60,000 at one stadium doesn't seem like a good idea. And the other idea is that, you know, West Australia is a footballing state as opposed to Queensland, which is obviously rugby dominated. Uh, West Australians, I think it would have meant a lot more to the average West Australian to have the grand final here than maybe the average Queenslander. And you might say, again, I'm an Eagles fan, so maybe my interests are a little bit conflicted. But I've actually spoken to Fremantle fans who were generally of the idea that a Perth grand final would have been pretty cool. But anyway, it is what it is. I'm certainly not whinging. And the Gabba is going to be hosting the grand final under lights, which for me is a little bit, it does kind of irk me as well. Again, the strongest argument I have against it is that I just don't like the aesthetic of a night grand final. But then again, the strongest argument for it is that uh, people like the aesthetic of a night grand final. So at the end of the day, uh, it was going to happen eventually. So why not do it in this season where everything is messed up? There is no doubt in my mind that an added benefit from the AFL's perspective is that this is going to be a major boost for football in Queensland. And at the end of the day, my opinion, that's probably the biggest drawing card for them hosting the grand final there. It'd be interesting to assess just how much this will boost football in Queensland this season. In addition to having the grand final, you've also had a shit ton of football played there. Now, people are saying anecdotally, there's evidence that you know, you see kids kicking footies outside more, uh, which is something you never really saw before. It's hard to assess to what extent that's really true. Let's also not pretend that a huge factor in Queensland's interest in footy being high is because you have the Brisbane Lions currently sitting in the top two and a major premiership contender anyway. Will simply having the grand final there have a long-term effect on boosting the game in Queensland? I'm skeptical, but if it does help the Brisbane Lions win a flag, at a home game at the Gabba, then that will do wonders for football in the state. And I do kind of actually get the attraction of that for Gil McLaughlin. Now, they've also talked a little bit around the rules about home finals and stuff like that. And it's getting a little bit complex. 
from the Eagles' perspective, and this is probably the only team it really affects, apparently the Eagles can host a Week 1 final in Perth, should they qualify for one, but can't host any finals after that, although they didn't actually specify about Week 2. But apparently, if the Eagles make a prelim final, they would have to nominate Adelaide Oval as their preferred home ground for that game. I think the idea behind that is just, you know, quarantine rules. You need a minimum of seven days quarantine in between games, whatever it is. That is a little bit of a blow for the Eagles' grand final chances, no doubt. Don't get me wrong, though, not whinging, because look at all the Victorian sides like Richmond and Geelong, who have it worse, and as far as I'm concerned, are much better chances to win the Premiership anyway. But for a interesting exercise, I have actually just knocked up a little predicted ladder and we can have a look at what the finals could look like if my predictions are right. So I will take you through AFL Squiggle yet again. So let's not fixate too much on the ladder, but I've run through what my predicted ladder from this point is. I've got Brisbane Lions taking home the minor premiership ahead of Port Adelaide, Richmond and Geelong in that top four. My boys, the Eagles just miss out. I think they're going to drop one of their games for the rest of the year and therefore miss out on the top four. GWS, Collingwood and Melbourne soar into that top eight ahead of the unlucky Bulldogs and St. Kilda. I'm going to hate in the comments for that, but that's not really the point of the video. The point of the video is to sort of have a little look at what the finals could look like uh, if this comes true. So week one, you've got Brisbane hosting Geelong at the Gabba. That seems pretty obvious. I'm going to say Brisbane win that. Let's just keep running through it. Uh, West Coast versus Melbourne. That game will be in Perth because it's a home final in week one. So if the Eagles finish fourth and say play, you know, Port Adelaide or Brisbane in week one, if they win that, then they don't get a home prelim, which is a bit stiff. But look, that is just the way the cards have fallen this year. I'll say the Eagles win that. GWS versus Collingwood. I'd imagine there's no issue with GWS hosting in Sydney and Port versus Richmond. I've got a funny feeling Richmond would actually topple them in that game. So looking at the semis, week two, Geelong versus West Coast. I'd imagine Geelong then gets to nominate where in Australia they'd like to have their home game. I presume it would be Queensland, like the Gabba or Metricon. Maybe they have the right to nominate Adelaide Oval. I'm not sure why they would. Um, so let's just say Geelong win, which I think they would, and Port Adelaide beat the Giants. And I believe Port can have Adelaide home games in throughout the finals up until the grand final. Brisbane at the Gabba hosting Port. Uh, let's say they'll win that. And then Richmond versus Geelong, again, probably at the Gabba. Uh, let's say Richmond win that. So, as far as I'm concerned, it looks like Brisbane is going to be making that grand final against a side like Richmond. So, long story short, this talk about, you know, maybe not playing games in Perth after week one of the finals, as far as I'm concerned, it's not really actually going to have a big effect had the Eagles been top of the ladder right now, I probably would have been a lot more aggrieved. But as far as I'm concerned, it's not going to matter come the end of the season. Oh, and just for a bit of fun, I'm going to say Richmond go back to back. I actually think Geelong and Richmond are the best two teams this year at the moment. But uh, securing that top two spot for Brisbane is going to be pretty crucial. Anyway, guys, just thought I'd spill the beans on my thoughts around the AFL 2020 Grand Final being in Queensland. As always, I welcome your opinions in the comments. Let me know where you think the Grand Final should have been and who you now think is the favourite to win the Premiership. Thanks, guys. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.